Hello, my name is Gamma Wood, and this is my sprint review. Go ahead and launch the project. I have my desktop audio recording, but I'm going to lower the music to zero. And master is already low from when I launched earlier. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate from the basement level. I got to do these first two light boxes. I'm going to pause the video to uh, ignore 30 seconds of the necessary time. All right. Finishing the last light box. There we go. Bring up my Jira task. Fix locker bug where a player can teleport back to locker if they interact with locker just before dying. So this is a pretty game breaking bug if you spam the uh, input left mouse button. After you failed a skill or when he was pulling you out of the locker, the monster, um, it would teleport you back into locker and then anywhere you are on the map you could uh, click the input again and it teleport you back in the locker. You would also respawn in it so it was pretty uh, pretty bad. But I was spamming the left mouse button right there when he was pulling me out and nothing uh, I couldn't get back in. The bug was pretty much gone. Demonstrate again. I'm going to spam left mouse button. And nothing happens. So yeah, there we go. On to hiding object polish. As a player, I want to bug free an immersive experience when interacting with the hiding objects found throughout the game. Player interact text removed from hiding objects while being captured. So it used to, when you're being captured, you'd come out of the locker and it would show the press left mouse button to enter locker which doesn't make sense because you can't actually enter it now it says cannot enter um, which it still says that now because uh, every time you fail a skill check and he pulls you out or even if you just fell and get out you can't enter that locker for a set amount of time um, now I can so it's a, it's not that long of a cooldown so uh, I'll go to the next one new, uh, new locker texture implemented See the new texture right there, rust, more detail, it's not just a gray material with a little metallic in it. Um, oh yeah, player exit, I forgot about this one. Player exits in correct location and faces the correct direction. So at first I had code in here that would make it, um, you'd face, like it would force your camera to face direction and the player transform. That was actually one of the main components to the locker bug. So I removed that and instead made the collision of to enter locker a lot smaller. So basically you were able to like enter locker from like ridiculous distances like this. See so now I have to be at least as close to get in so it's not as abrupt as being like right here and clicking it or even thinking worst cases right here almost. So basically the way I have it is monsters coming in a back way. Instead of having the code because it caused bugs, you just have to be a lot closer. So when you exit, you're still really close to the locker and it's not like, you know, super immersive breaking. This is a cooldown on it. But... And the camera faces wherever you're looking as you're exiting the locker, like it would in real life. If you're looking this way, you'll start looking this way when you're getting out. So Works out pretty well. UI skill check increased in size. It used to be a scale of 1. Now it's 1.5, so it's about 50% bigger. Which I think is a pretty good size. Audio feedback adding or audio feedback added for getting in and out of tables. So this is kind of hard to come up with because you don't really make noise getting in and out under the table. Maybe like a knee popping or something. But instead, I just made like a little thud, so you know, like you're doing an input. So it has a little thud like that. Next um, visual effect takes place on skill check failed. So right here, fail skill check failed. It does a little red screen flash. You can see the monster running to it. Oh, he saw me and swipes at me. All right. Snow cube plays when skill check begins. Ping right there. All right. And that's it for the um, the locker or the hiding object polish. So the tables also have all that implemented. It does the screen flash sound, all that. It's a uh, child blueprint of basically the hiding object um implement new animations to monster and ghost enemies so i'll show the hiding the walking the walking and investigate so basically he walks to something and when he investigates he does the idle which is like a look around so that's these are the idle and investigates the same animation catching the player i'll show that as i just got caught so you saw it there but i'll show it again breaking out of the cage i actually didn't imp implement this the um keith who did the cage and all that programming he put it in the, the montage of that so I did not actually implement this so we'll go and uh, show the animations so stuff on this you can see I'm doing his walk he'll do his running crawl when he sees me 
chase after me, and when he catches me, he does a swipe like that. Um, I guess I need to do him the, do the idle. I think if I fail a skill check, he'll come and look at it and do his little idle for a second. So this is idle. He looks around, then he walks away. He has idle and investigates against the same animation. So ghost enemy um, uses idle animation. The ghost never sits still. Really, it's kind of always it's always doing the floating slash movement. So these are kind of it doesn't have the idle. This stuff kind of um, progresses as we go throughout the month and change ideas. So it doesn't also doesn't catch the player. It just plays a noise when it sees the player to alert the main monster to come get them. And it does have a death and despawning animation as well. The conclusion criteria there. So I'm going to pause the video and get the flashlight as you can't really see over there without it. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and I have the flashlight. I'm going to try to like if you shine the flashlight on the ghost, it despawns it. So I'm going to try to show it without despawning it. You can see it right there, it's doing its little float, like that. Let's see if I can bring it out to the light. And then when I shine it with the light, it does the despawn. Monster's coming at me, so I'm gonna, it's gonna get me, what I can do about that. So you can see it's floating, and then it despawns. Those are really the only two animations on the ghost enemy. You see it doing, oh, that one despawned as well. Let's see if it comes back up, I'll show it again. And that might take too long, so we'll go to the next one. Fix bug with enemy not facing correct direction when catching the player in the locker. So it used to be the the monster could face some pretty like weird uh weird directions when getting the player from the locker. So now skill check failed. It's gonna take him a little bit to get over here. I think he was pretty far away. There you go. I guess I took. He was too far away for the. If he's too far away from the locker, he won't actually grab you out just because it takes so long for him to get there. It just kind of expires. But this one I think should be close enough. Yeah, it pulls me, looks at me the correct way, and swipes at me. So that's that. Or he could like be facing the complete. He could be pull you out and then be looking this way and swiping. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But now it faces the correct direction. So keep going. Correct monster footstep audio to acquire depending on distance from player. So this is just, I just need to get his attention and show how far he is. Uh, I just edited attenuation settings to make it to where it's pretty balanced. Where if you hear him, you have time to react. But you don't just hear him from across the map and always know where he's at. See, he's over there and I can't hear him anymore. I still can't hear him. Just right there, I could hear him. See if I step on that again. He's not gonna come all the way to the class pile because he's only in interested for like I think ten or fifteen seconds. So if it takes him that long to get there, he's gonna lose interest and just go back to his normal patrolling. But yeah, footstep audio. It used to be you could kind of hear him from really far away. You could right here, I could pinpoint exactly where he was, which kind of takes the the danger out of things. So yeah, um, that is pretty much all I have to showcase. I hope you enjoyed and have a good one. Hello, this is Lane Campbell from Team Lunar. I'm going to be doing my sprint review uh, for the most recent sprint, final sprint, for um, our project Shattered Sanity. I'll go ahead and show it opening on Perforce. Go to options real quick and turn music down. Make sure you can hear me. Okay, and before I jump in, we'll go to Jira. Uh, first thing I'll show is a bug that I took care of, where the player is able to move around while using the crowbar to open doors. We wanted it so that the player could not move around while performing this action. So back in and to show that I'll go to this level where I can do it quickly got my crowbar go over here to the door I've started opening it I'm able to move the camera around which is fine 
but uh, what's notable, notable is I cannot move around anymore where before I could until I open the door I'm free to move around again so that is taken care of just to make it easier I'm gonna move these over here as I go over them all right next Let's do uh, add debris props to the basement level. So I just basically needed to add some um, props to sell the um, dilapidated state of the asylum. So let's go over to that level. Uh, right away we see all the tiles that I've added to uh, sell that all these broken tiles I should say and if we go in here there's more broken tiles and more broken tiles plenty of them um, all these uh, boards and also piles of debris have been added uh, for that task. So this is complete. Uh, next I'll show the dead patients in basement level. I actually already walked past them, but I'll show them off. Again, uh, here we have Three of our dead patients. There are more throughout the level, but as you can see, they are implemented, so this task is complete. Uh, let's also go over the new walls, um, new wall assets, and uh, I did have a floor one. Oh, here we go. And, and the assets for the floor. So two separate Jira tasks, but we can see them both in the shot here. Got the new tile walls. I also put on the ceiling um, and also the floor, uh, both provided by our artists. So both of these tasks are complete. Um, while we're here, we can also look at the task adjust lights in the opening hallway so that they are centered on the ceiling. Um, it was pointed out um, by one of our playtesters that they were off center and uh, just a little distracting if you noticed it. And so uh, these are the lights in question. As you can see, they are now in the center of the hallway, less distracting. So that task is complete. Uh, we can also go over the hospital assets that I added to the level. I didn't need too many because the basement has more of the cafeteria and um, conference areas of a hospital rather than like the inpatient, but I did provide some right here in the opening. We have a gurney, a side table, uh, this IV divider, and stool right here, all part of that task. I already moved it. Okay. So next, uh, we can go over the implement final art for the button generator. Uh, we've also already seen it, but I'll go show it again. Uh, so this is our button generator right here. I'll go show it in action one more time, but it is completely implemented and functioning as intended with its final art and all. So this task is complete. Um, okay, and then implement the final art for the hiding cafeteria tables. The cafeteria tables that you hide in is what that means. I'll show that as it's right here in the next room. These right here are our final art assets provided by the artists. Uh, functioning as intended. And I 
called him over. Go ahead and let him go back. Okay. So that task is complete. Oh, that's exactly where. All right. Um, let's do the updated kitchen slash cafeteria assets. So I added quite a few for this one. Probably my favorite scene that I have in my level. Oh, I should also say that I added a few janitorial things to be included in the um, hospital assets and things like fire extinguishers, things you'd expect to find in a hospital that aren't just medical related. But here's the kitchen where I've added these tables, these racks, um, food, plates, broken plates, bowls, knife, uh, block holder, cutting block, uh, these mounts, ovens, Pots, pans, trash cans, uh, all these things uh, in order to sell the scene of the hospital, or hospital, the um, kitchen. Uh, next we can go over adding visual cues for the slide through areas, the areas the player can slide right through. Uh, for this I've added under each of the slide through areas a trail of blood going right between also this bloody handprint uh, to get the player's attention before there was nothing but these little openings and they could be hard to notice so these make them stand out quite a bit more. Working as intended of course. Uh, we're also in a good spot to show the flickering lights above next point of interest. Um, you can see it right here. I've got my flickering light above the pickup, the flashlight. Make sure the player picks that up. And you should be able to see it in here as well. See off in the distance, that is where the next button generator is. We've got flickering lights, and that will continue throughout the level. Each button generator uh, will have a flickering light to draw the player's attention. Uh, let's also go over cables leading from one button generator to another. And I've also been able to kind of see those already, but uh, here I uh, created a spline actor uh, blueprint that takes a mesh and replicates it and um, basically just makes it so that I can create things like this that go from one area to the other. You see it is leading the player along. Goodbye, ghost. To their nook's point of interest the next light box and then that light box has another cable for the player to follow so this task is successfully completed as well all right uh, next we will go over implementing the final art for the monster uh, i think the best way to do that is to just go over and die from him. That's the best way to get a close-up look at him. Turn some lights on over there to help. Uh, you can see him right there. Got a pretty good, fairly good look at him from this safe vantage point. He's got his final arts. He's patrolling around like intended. And if he notices me, he comes over and gets me. Just like we want. So he is taken 
taken care of. Uh, the last thing I have, right? Yep, last thing I have is um, the enemy. There was a bug where the enemies in the cafeteria could despawn if um, you were to go into uh, the corner by the exit. And I'll show the particular corner here. Um, it's actually right over there by the door. If you went over there, you could just despawn all the enemies because you would hit a collision that purposefully removes them. But now if I go over here and try to trigger that collision, the enemies are not despawning as intended, still here. So that bug has been resolved. And those are all of my tasks completed. Thank you for watching. Hello, my name is Lillian Truex, and I am a part of Team Lunar, and this is my portion of our sprint review video for the milestone for our final project and portfolio. I'll load this up. I am going to make sure the music is off. But the first thing I would like, uh, the first task I would like to showcase here is um, making the mouse sensitivity adjustable. Make the mouse sensitivity able for the player to adjust. This allows the player to lower or raise the mouse sensitivity for the game. I have two hours logged in here. And if I go to options, I can raise the mouse sensitivity up super high. I'll go back and you can see it goes pretty fast. And then if I go back into it and go super low, it goes really slow. Okay. And this also does segue into another task I have completed for this sprint, which is including the mouse sensitivity on the option menu. With the new mouse sensitivity being added to the project, add the option to adjust the mouse sensitivity with a slider on the options menu. This will be added below the volume sliders. I have one hour logged in there. That kind of showcases a little bit. You see the mouse sensitivity can be adjusted here in the options menu under the music sl sliders and uh, with a slider of its own. I'll put about right there because I like my mouse sensitivity a little bit lower, at least for this game. And another task I have completed for this sprint is to make a lost levels screen on the level select for prototype levels we want to include. Adjust one of the milestone level select widgets to be a lost levels wi widget that allow the player to access pr prototypes that we want to include in the final build. I have 30 minutes logged in here. For this, we'll go back to the main menu. And then we will go to the level select and here you can see the lost levels button here. And then it says lost levels and it has a little description of lost levels for people who are unfamiliar. Uh, lost levels are levels that were made in development but were not included in the final levels. These are mostly prototype levels made to showcase different mechanics. Okay. And then this also segues into another task that I have done, which is remove toy box level and unwanted prototypes. Remove toy box level and other prototype levels from being accessed by the player. This will include removing all the buttons and references in the level select widgets. I have one hour logged in here. And originally, um, we have six prototype levels and, and then the warehouse level. Originally, we had six more prototype levels, and then we also had our toy box level. So we decided which ones of the prototype levels we wanted to keep, and I removed all the buttons and references to the other levels that we wanted to not include, as well as the toy box. Right. Another task that I have completed for this sprint is fixing the crowbar widget. So if the player has the crowbar and dies and loses the crowbar, the widget is still in the viewport. When the player dies and loses the crowbar, the widget will remove from the viewport. If the player has the crowbar and dies and loses the crowbar, the widget is still in the viewport. These are the steps to replicate it, and the severity was high. It took me about 10 minutes to uh, be able to get that working again. For this, we go into the hospital. 
I'm not sure if it's all right in the point. There you go. As you can see here, um, we do have the crowbar widget. Where's the crowbar? We have the crowbar widget. And I will just go and get killed real quick. All right, we try and you can see I don't have the crowbar anymore because it wasn't saved just yet. And so the crowbar widget is gone. All right, so the next task that I have completed is use a pen string on the wind screen. So instead of using text lines for each of the stats within the wind widget, change that to a pen string so that the anchors are not messed up and reduce room for error. I have one hour logged in here. As you can see right up here, um, I put a vertical box and then the text in there, so I just had to anchor one thing down, and they all look very nice. I did the same thing with the stats. Here with the times and the collectibles, where it has a dash and the colon, that's where I use the append string to make things look nicer and to make sure that they won't mess up their position. Mm -hmm. This also segues into another task I have completed, which is add a max for collectible stats in the win screen. Within the win widget, add a max count for the collectibles within the level. This will help the player understand that they have collected all the collectibles or not. So it's 20 minutes locked. And there are three here, so I have two um, for the collectibles. Another task that I have completed was updating all the UI buttons to match. So update all the UI buttons to match. Uh, that are available to the player within the game to be the same. This includes the different images for normal, hovered, and pressed. I spent about 20 minutes on this. Um, so as you can see these, uh, whenever they're hovered and then um, when I press, they are the same as the buttons from the main menu, which I will show you, as well as these. Okay, so all of these buttons are the same. If we even go to the credits and the back button, level select, the buttons for all the levels are the same um, with hovered and clicked. The options menus. Right. All right, and then the next task that I have completed was fixed tutorials to all have the same formula. Some tutorials, some tutorials pop up when the player overlaps the collision and some pop up when the player interacts with an object. Change this so that all the tutorials pop up when the, over, when the player overlaps the collision. I spent about an hour and 30 minutes on this. I originally estimated about an hour, but it took me just a little bit longer. So. Okay. You can show that here. tutorial for here, you can see um, this uh, started when I overlapped the collision. The hiding one, it will be the same too. I overlapped the collision. So, you know.
so I can show you another one as well. That also overlaps too. And you did see where it overlapped here as well. Alrighty. The next task that I also completed was adjusting anchors on tutorial screens. Adjust and double check anchors on the tutorial widgets to make sure that everything is in the correct position. This will need to be tested in the build as well as in the editor. And uh, if you would go here to tutorials, they only will be available to the player after they've seen the pop-up. Um, but I double checked all of the widgets within and the anchors within this widget um, to make sure that they all are in the correct position. I did this for every single one of these. So they all look the way that we want them to. Go. The next task I worked on was specify lockers, tables, and beds are hiding areas within the tutorials. Specifying the hiding area tutorials that beds, tables, and lockers are areas for the player to hide. This will help the, give the player more information so that they understand where to hide clearly. I spent about 30 minutes on this. For this, we need to go back to the main menu. Start game. Once we get over here and the pop-up appears, you can see at the top it says hide from monster in lockers, under tables, and under beds. So the next task that I have completed was update credits to include audio designer and artist. Update the credit widgets to include in sections for the art team and the audio student that are now working on the project. Add their names to show those sections and add anchors so that they stay in the correct position. I have spent about 10 minutes on this. For this, we'll go to the main menu and the credits. And you can see the names of the artists here under the game artists and name for music production here. I double checked with both game artists and the music production student to make sure I got their names correctly and how they wanted them. All right, the next task I worked on was fix when holding the pickup objects where the interact text still appears. So for this, when the player picks up and holds a pickup object, the interaction text for that object still appears. When the player picks up and holds a pickup object, the interaction for the text for that object will not appear on screen is supposed to be the expected result. And the actual result is the same as the summary. It was set to replicate. I spent about 30 minutes on this. I can show that to you guys. Go level select the warehouse level. So for these, see the text does not appear anymore when you are holding and picking up the object. Put that over there because this segues into another task that I have completed, which is. Specialized text, uh, interact text for generators. Make the interact text for generators specific to the generators. For example, pull, press left mouse button to pull level lever. This way the player will know exactly what they're interacting with. So if I resume. Then we pick up these. Now it's all complete. It's press LNB to pull level lever. There we go. The next task that I worked on was specialized interact text for lockers. 
um, make the interact text for the locker specific to the lockers. So press L and B to open locker. This way the player will know exactly what they're interacting with. This is 20 minutes that I spent on this. And the one that I specifically did was for entering the locker. So you can see here, press L and B to enter locker. That is the widget that I made for it. And then another task that I worked on was include in-game writing to tell the player where to go to go towards the lit areas. So make widgets in the game dialog that tells the player to move toward the areas that are lit. These will be placed in the basement level and go onto the player's viewport throughout the introduction of the level when they have completed the light box and unlocked another. This will let the player know that when completing the light boxes, we'll turn on lights within the level. This will also give visual feedback to the player on where they need to go next. Spent 10 minutes on this. Um, the only issue is that we decided um, within this sprint that we did not actually want to include those. So um, we thought it would break too much immersion for the player. Um, and we have made other things a bit more obvious with the cables to show the players where they need to go next. Uh, so I cannot showcase that one. But those are the tasks that I have completed for this sprint. Thank you so much for watching. Hello everybody, my name is Michael Baltazar, and today we'll be going over Team Lunar's uh, final sprints of Shattered Sanity, formerly known as So No One Will Cry. And with my 15 tasks, it was Specialized Interact Text for Bottle, Specialized Interact Text for Breaking Open Doors, AI Detection Rework to make AI to make the UI show distance, Add confirmation pop-up for return to main menu. Add an interact text blurb to leave the locker. Add the visual eyes. Add a visual element to get the player's attention on the windows in the basement. Implementing chase music. Text, text to pick up flashlight that appears after pickup. Add landmark slash unique assets the main ones we focused on were exit signs cafeteria signs elevator signs implementing hospital while our assets implementing ambiance music implementing updated monster model add a visual effect to show flashlight uh, and ghost monster when interacting with ghost, the ghost monster, a detection fails to load properly uh, from death and restart. Bottle interact tags overlaps with other types of text. So, without further ado, let us get started with Shattered Sandy, also formerly known as So No, no One Will Cry. Okay. Let's go back. <coughs> All right. First things first. Save. Resume. You can clearly see that. The ambiance music is implemented. Uh, there it is, ambiance music implemented. Okay, zoom. All right, let us continue. Walk here. Unique assets. Well. Not specifically mine, but still unique assets nonetheless. We have the cafeteria. Alright. Let's enter locker. Press left mouse button to leave locker. So that's also there. As previously stated. Left mouse button to interact. And the reason why I have this set up is just to make sure to show you multiple things. 
as you can see. So a few things were there. First, you saw the chase music was implemented. Then you saw the AI detection meter uh, was there. And then, let's see. Another thing we want to show is, as you saw, the AI detection meter still pops up. So, sorry about that. Um, as you saw, the uh, ambiance chase. All right. AI detection, uh, interact text blurb, let's see, fixed, and I believe chase music. So a good amount was set in. Let's retry this once more. Oh, you see, visual element was right there. Visual element was shown uh, to show that the flashlight did interact with the ghost. Oh, we are back here. Oh, just like this. saw the visual indicators to show all right to pick up bottle you pick up the bottle you see it doesn't interact with anything else have a visual indicator based on the flashlight through the window.
let's let's lower down the music a bit. Still got caught. Let's retry one more time. Still got me. Let's see. Alright, and then elevator right here. Nope, button. Let's see. Statistics. Continue. Let's continue. Alright, you see. Uh, hospital level, same as well, uh, same setup, let's get that, uh, text right there, uh, sorry, 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 <coughs> unique asset right there, I don't know, I said text, Let's see if it will move away. Oh. And let's see. Generator. Oh, the bottle. <coughs> we were caught. You try.
seems like we're gonna have to do this multiple times. I already got a wrench, let's see. Controls. Let's see. Lower it down to that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I had to repair the cage, not the, not the button. So, my mistake. Just set this up. There's no more wrenches, so we're just gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. see uh, everything seems to be working fine uh, you saw I fixed it when we were breaking the cages and everything so I think with all that being said I do believe that I got everything down for <coughs> for my assignments a little bit of a reworking for the AI detection but all around it works pretty well and with all that being said I'm going to call it here and thank you for your time hello everyone my name is Eris Tori a member of Team Lunar and we're gonna be we're gonna be demonstrating Shadow Sanity the game that we have created but first off we're going to uh, we're going to lower, lower the, uh, the game music so we're going to we're also going to lower the sound effect a little bit since since I add since there were some additions of sound effects that we're, that we're going to be, that we're going to be finding. All right, so let's head to the hospital level, which is the level I created. But first off, before we continue, we're going to go through our jury task. So as you can see here, my initials AT. This is jury task that we're going to going to be checking out or demonstrating actually. Okay, let's go. Okay, so as you can see, there's an exit sign over here. There's also another exit sign in the, level, in the ending of the level. There's dead patients around. There's the medical assets around here. There's, there's an updated hospital bed over here. And this is the debris over here. This actually looks like a, a, an actual abandoned hospital at this point. Okay, so. We're gonna we're gonna check out where there's a there's a um sound effect where where you can go and open a visual effect where where the uh, where effect where the um oh it caught me anyway there's a sound effect where's the where the um where the, where the locker go when we go to the locker in and out. It just also, as we can see, there's a visual effect where the skill fail, the skill check has failed. So let's see what we got, what we've seen so far. So we added updated hospital as, I mean, hospital updated floor access to hospital level. Add updated uh, exit sign access to hospital level. 
we're seeing skill check visual effect or skill check fail visual effect add updated medical assets to hospital level add updated hospital beds assets to the hospital level and add debris props to hospital level add, add an audio cube where the, wait oh wait man that's the wrong one I just passed it. Add audio feedback for getting in and out of locker. Add and up and implementing dead patient at hospital level. Okay, so let's continue. Alright. Come in the locker. Okay, so it should be fine here. All right. All right, now that the, now that the door's closed, let's grab this thing right here. It's the trophy. It's the trophy over there. All right. And so as you can see, this generator over here. So we are going to. Oh yeah, the sliding doors. This is another. This is another thing I added to my uh, task. So go go back to the Jira tags. Implement updated art assets to sliding doors. Then that and that's it, and that's for uh, that's it for this up. Uh, that's that's for this part right here. Now for the and now for the practice area. As we, I will explain to you about the um the sprint strings. Okay, so the print string. Is where is where the enemy is either pursuing, or investigating, or or even patrolling. But the, uh, there's like there's like a text where a text of a print string where it shows that let us know where the, if the um the enemy is investigating or something like that. But it doesn't show in the game now. So we so we remove we remove the um the print string for the um for the introduction and practice area in the hospital level. So back to the game. Let's open the door. We see the enemy right here. All right, so we gotta wait. We're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna uh, close the cage yet, though. You can see there's, there was a, a sound, there was a sound effect for the um. For the tutorial pop-up, which is on the uh, what's on the top left. Oh, we hear. Oh, yeah, we hear. We hear the ghost sound effect too. And this is exactly where the noise came from, which is actually all the ghosts. It is kind. Of, it is too much. Abandoned hospitals are pretty much creepy. But let's pick the, let's pick the wrench up. Let's pick the wrench up. Oh, the um, the enemy's right is is on the um. There we go. There he is. All right, so we're gonna be going through here. Gotta be careful. Let's grab the. Let's grab this. It's also a gener a generator as we heard this generator uh, sound effect that we if we put in the, put if we put like any uh missing parts in there, it will it will play a sound, which we already did. And so Alright, now that's finished. Now that's done, let's get Actually wait. Quickly, okay, that was close. Okay, so we, so we will see. We're gonna have to wait so we can trap the enemy. All right, let's trap the enemy. Open the door.
All right, then. Let's just forget about the trophy for right now. All right, so what we so what we've seen around here was the, the, the new ghost models, and the, and what happens when a ghost reappears. So these are the uh, so okay so implement updated model for ghost ghost monster. So the so from from back then there were the ghosts were actually like T posing, but now now that there's like updated models for the ghost monsters and that. And also added the sound effect for them re either reappearing, and for uh, for, re for them reappearing. And this, and this is exactly this is exactly what I added in this game. All right, so I'm going for it. Oh wait, let's be careful since the um the enemies over there. And we should be good. Okay, so enemies right here, but I want to wait for that right now yet again, because it will go to go go to the door, go to the room right in that is in here. And then it will go back, and that's where another puzzle piece is at. All right, so we should be good now. Now let's head back quickly. Here we go. Let's do it again. There we go. Up. Oh. That was close. I'm getting the lock quickly. All right, so we're fine. Okay, so let's wait again. There we go. So now that we got auto generators, let's open it. Let's pull the lever. Let's head out quickly. <laughs> and we finally made it. All right, so. Number of tiles die, one. Number of collectors gather, only one out of three. Number of bottles on zero, since I'm using a laptop. A time took to escape, ten, 10 minutes is six seconds. Time's been hiding, 20, 22 seconds. And so around here, we ensured that we, we ensured that we, that uh, all, um, every, everything is all grounded at level. It should insert our assets are grounded at our are at ground level within the hospital level and for me I think that's pretty much it that is all and that is all that I got down want to demonstrate for my level thank guys so much for watching and until we meet again hi this is Keith Patty for team lunar and I'm gonna be showcasing the work that I completed and the jury task for the sprint of shattered sanity Over here just to make it easier all right so i'm gonna load into the build right now all right and let's jump over to the jira tests all right so the first thing that i want to talk about is the um, updated art asset for the lightbox monitor i'm going to jump into that um, real quick i'm going to turn down the music um, start the game. 
And we can see that the light box meter is no more. Uh, it's been replaced with this widget that has a progress bar now. Um, it did take quite a bit of teamwork to get that binding to work, um, but I was responsible for putting the new widget on there um, and getting the uh, functionality to uh, work with the light box code or the light meter code. Um, so basically I got the widget on there and then um, was trying to get the binding going and uh, the rest of the team hopped onto a call to help get that working as we all really wanted this display to work. Um, we did have to pivot on the light box monitor uh, since the video that we were provided wasn't going to cover the binding uh, for the variable. But I think that with the widget, it uh, came out nicely, although we don't really have a background for it. But the progress bar does work and it uh, looks nice um, as far as I'm concerned for it. So on to the next thing. I'm going to move uh, on for fixing the bug with the stamina where the player double taps uh, shift. They keep running. Um, if the player double taps shift and continues to sprint, uh, then the stamina will begin to recharge while running. The expected result is obviously that should not happen. It should only regenerate a short time after the sprint button is released or a player relent, uh, runs out of stamina. Um, actual result, player can regenerate while sprinting. Um, start sprinting, double tap shift, and continue to sprint to recreate the bug. And I'm also going to cover one other thing kind of at the same time because it's it's a good place to show it, is um, getting rid of these print strings within the player. Um, and I'm just moving these over to needs review as I go through them. Just I'm going to put them back after just to kind of go through the checklist. Um, so I'm going to start sprinting. You can see there's that, I believe that print string came from the monster uh, his nav point. But as far as the player blueprint is concerned, uh, none, none of his... Uh, Stamina code is popping up. It's not showing the number of stamina uh, value anymore. It is communicating on the bar. And you can see that no matter how many times I tap the sprint, I can spam it as much as I like and then continue to sprint. My stamina will still go down. I'd also like to note that um, there's different regeneration delays for if the player has stamina left or if they are completely out. Uh, it covers two seconds to cover that little out of breath sound animation um, if they're completely out and one second if they are not out of stamina. All right, um, so the next thing that I'm gonna move into real quick is completing the camera focus when completing the button generator on a single spot just so the player has a second to take in what's going on. I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. And then I'm going to, there we go, you can see. It worked right there, and you saw the lights come on and the door opened. I'm gonna run over to this mix white box, complete it real quick, and start talking about the uh, slide through areas, the delay add to that, and the bug that I fixed with that. Also to touch on the collectibles, I added some textures and changed the color of the light to make them look a little bit nicer. All right, jump over to the jeer test. And I'm going to talk about this delay for the slide through areas. So basically, it's just a uh, one second delay um, that happens after the player interacts. So they don't accidentally double click and pass back through and go right into the monster. And I also will cover the bug where the sound effect plays, even though the player didn't pass through it. Um, the player had to be just at the edge of the collision. If they were, they wouldn't pass through. The sound would still play. That's a little typo. Um, the expected result is to pass through, player passes through, and sound only plays if the player passes through, and the player is able to interact again after a delay. Um, actual result is that if they're on the very edge, it wouldn't pass through, and it also would kind of break and not allow the player to interact again. So I'm going to use my collision vision here to try to get right onto the edge and pass through. And we can see that it, it still allows me um, to enter that bug. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to spam the microphone. We can see that it's not going to go back through until one second has passed. Um, so that's a little fine tuning that I've done to the pass through areas. Um, and I really have created this bug a whole bunch uh, since I fixed it. And if the player does recreate it, uh, the sound won't play, and um, they 
will be able to interact with it again, even if it fires off. Um, the do once will still reset, which was an issue that was kind of happening beforehand. Um, but yeah, that's all fixed. I'm going to talk about flashlight text really quickly. Um, so this LMB to collect was not disappearing, um, and it was reappearing when the player walked back over the collision. Um, so I'm going to talk that real quick and just demonstrate that that works. Collect it. It's gone. We walk back over where it was. It's not there. And now we can move on to the light box trigger and the check mark. I'm just going to get there really quick. Since the flashlight also um, triggers a check mark. But the mindset with the light boxes was that um, we wanted it to save the progression that the that completing the puzzle allowed. Uh, so I'm going to do this puzzle real quick, uh, hold the button down, and I'm going to let him catch me. And then I'm going to show that I go right back here. Alright, and we're right back at the light box. So I'm going to end up moving on to the um, bottle throw next. But I just have to get through this area real quick. through the door all right and we can see first thing is that the um and i did just talk about this the light box does trigger the checkpoint i'll just show that real quick and i'm going to move that over here um and we added updated art assets for the glass bottle and then we're going to show the collect ui has been fixed oh, yeah. A lot of players are already holding one. Uh, so you can see it kind of pops up twice because of the overlap. So to fix that, I removed all instances of that widget from the player's viewport. Um, and we can see that if the player already has one, you can walk over the overlap and it won't pop up again. Um, just to show the uh, bottle throw. Um, sometimes it does take a weird bounce. Um, but for the most part, it is landing where you'd expect it to. Um, is going albeit a little bit far right now i probably have to play around with the math a little bit more um but i updated the ui um track tracking uh the the predicted path i made the blueprint size a little bit bigger so the player could see it a little bit and the fall off wasn't as extreme on the sizing um basically the bottle goes in a much more well-behaved line um for the final build, I am probably going to have to disable the movement of the player because it doesn't behave very well with the player's velocity. Um, so we'll probably just go back to disabling the movement. But you can see, um, I also adjusted the clamping on the adjustment a little bit so that way you can aim it a little bit closer and a little bit lower on the max distance. Um, but you can see... It, like I said, it just took that bounce. Um, but it does hit the ground relatively um, well to the spot that you think it's going to go. It does take a little bit of adjustment um, based on, see right there, it took that bounce. I think it hit the spline mesh or something. Um, but sometimes it does um, overcompensate for where the player is aiming, unfortunately. But for the most part, it does follow where you'd expect it to um, and is much more playable than previous iterations for sure um but yeah that's the fine tuning that i did for that and you can also see um i'll jump over to the next task before talking about it real quick i also um so that's the visual distance lining up with the predicted path i just demonstrated that and the next thing that i'm going to demonstrate is the removing the sphere trace on the bottle throw um so you, you probably already noticed it um, when I throw the bottle, there's no longer a sphere trace on it um, that is being debugged and drawn in the uh, actual gameplay. Um, so that is gone. And I'm going to show one more thing that's going to be kind of fun here um, once he gets loses sight of me. Um, so when I run through these hazards, there used to be a sound effect that would overlap pretty badly um, and cause a lot of distortion. I put some checks in there to limit how often it was happening, and um, it 
Well, still, times, but much less to an extreme degree. Um, and I just kind of got caught there. Um, but I will now move on to that area after I can kind of get him out of my way. As you see, we run over it. And admittedly, it does play a few extra times. Um, but it is no longer doing it to the point where it is super distorted and causing the sound effect to play weirdly. Um, for the next part, I'm going to talk about preparing the prototype levels, um, as well as a few other tasks. Um, I'll just hop into a couple of them, show that the stuff has been updated, like the skill check lockers and everything like that. Um, let me hop into the Jira test because there's quite a bit of things here. Um, adding the stamina bar to the levels, adding a flashlight to the beginning of the levels, um, adding music, um, add, fixing the small generators, fixing the rotation of the gears, deleting all the light meters, replacing all the lockers with skill checks, assigning all enemies to the proper lockers, fix the broken door to work with the multiple use crowbar, added the collectibles to all levels, and fixed the positions and rotations of doors in all the levels and added light box managers to all the levels. Um, so I'm gonna showcase that in the alert enemy. Um, I'm also gonna turn on the music. I might have to load out of the level and load back in. It might not be playing right away. Yeah, let me see. Um, all right, there we go. Um, so let me just adjust the music of it a little bit. And you can see the music's in here. Um, these are now skill check lockers. We have the stamina bar. Um, we have the flashlight. That will work on the ghost. actually lower the music again sorry it's very loud all right and you can see there's a collectible right here and now generators have been all fixed for the proper sizes this gears are laying flat so that way they don't uh obstruct the player's view vertically you can see there's another collectible over here um, I'm actually going to display the light box uh, next. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for this level. You can hear the music playing. You can see the stamina bar in there. Um, this has been done to all the prototype levels. Admittedly, I probably will have to comb over them um, again and just make sure that everything in there is it becomes a pretty extensive list um, of things. So I'm going to move on to the alert enemy level and um, kind of talk about a little bit more there and then move to the cage trap level or not the learning, sorry, the broken door, move on to the cage trap. And I think that should be enough levels. Um, the bottle throw kind of ended up having a little bug um, where it's not loading up right now in the build. So we just, so that one has been prepped. It just needs to um, be uh, added to the final build. Um, but I'm going to go into the broken door, and you know, the monster's having some issues there. Again, these are prototype levels. Um, so we can see there's the flashlight, the stamina bar, the collectible. Um, and there is actually something here that I do want to show uh, with the bottles, if I can pull it off. Um, it's the last thing for the bottles that I really want to talk about, and it's that delay that happens to call investigation a few seconds afterwards. And it's a little hard to show because actually, uh, yeah, never mind. Um, it's a little hard to show just because you have to make sure that the bottle's not gonna land on the shatter box. And this was really kind of done for an edge case scenario where it doesn't happen. Um, so I'm gonna do my uh, very best to uh, get it to land like on that. Ah, so close. 
a short delay it will disappear and it'll come on and it won't spawn ahead um so that when the player steps on it uh so that way there's nothing there for the player to step on and replace it they couldn't um but that's just a an edge case check oh i accidentally quit to desktop i'm so sorry didn't mean to do that i'll launch the build again um yeah but that's basically it for the um broken door level um stuff has been added in there music keys um collectibles and i'm just gonna jump into the cage trap levels uh real quick to show the rest um of my jira tests here um so let me go back you can hear the music i'm gonna turn it off all the way um and then you can see again stamina bar um flashlight and now i'm gonna get to the updated art for the ca cage um that's already been covered um so implement updated art for the cage uh you can see that's been put in there and also the other test that i'm going to cover at this moment is the animation graph or animation montage for the monster it had to be recreated um because of the new skeleton for the new mesh um, so I did that and fixed up the animation with the new ones that were provided. Um, and I'm also going to cover the fixing the bug where the wrench did not disappear after the tutorial screen and the text for fixing the cage right now. Um, so here we go. So we can see there's new art, art for the cage. It still works. Um, big part of it was implementing that new location for the door and everything. Um, but his animation has been updated, and he will now still break out of the cage after playing the new animation. Um, we can see the wrench does, in fact, disappear after it has been picked up. So there's uh, that. Um, and the tutorial screen has been completely removed from the wrench as well. Um, so that also helps. Uh, we have these little tutorial pop-ups that will come up now. Um, and then we can fix the cage. You can see it still works perfectly fine with the new assets. And um, you can see that it says uh, click LMB to uh, repair cage. Um, so I will let him. Oh, I thought I just put that. Okay. I will let him break out there. Sorry, he's scratching the wrong way. Alright, I'll let him break out of there one more time. Grab a wrench. And you can see it says press L and D to repair the cage. All right. And um, just really quickly, um, I think there is admittedly one little thing that I missed in the uh, in one of the levels here as well. I think I did miss the stamina bar in the uh, keypad level. Um, but that should be the only thing. Um, everything else has been implemented in here. Uh, just going to take a second for the lights to turn on, as it is a pretty early level. Um, so it's kind of hard to see, but I do apologize. I still have the flashlight. Um, the music does still play. Uh, I believe this... Yeah, the music volume isn't even right for some reason but i'll just load back in there real quick show that the music does in fact play um yeah there it goes but i'll just lower the volume on that because i do want to show that it's in there and then we have the flashlight and like i said i do apologize with the stamina bar was one thing that i missed on this level um but we can see there's still skill check levels, uh lockers um, those are still in here. Um, the flashlight's been added and the ambiance music has been added as well. I'm going to cover the darkness level a little bit because we couldn't put the skill check lockers in there. Um, but everything else is done for it. The stamina bar is there. Flashlight should be right over here. Um, 
And like I said, there's no main monster enemy as we're prototyping a different enemy, but we can see there's a collectible. Um, I believe there is a generator in here somewhere that I can show that I resized. Yep, uh, that's the gas turbine. That's the original gas turbine. Right um, I believe. Yeah, there should be a regular generator right over here. Somewhere. Oh no, that's just a part. Sorry, I didn't design this level, so I don't know it perfectly. And that's the uh, darkness monster that I was talking about catching the uh, player. Uh, but yeah, you can see that the gen um, without tracking down the generator, I'll do it one more shot. There it is. Um, you can see that that's been completely resized to be accurate now. And that's our darkness enemy uh, from prototyping uh, that will catch you and end the game. So we had a concept of an alternate enemy. Um, and uh, like I said, the bottle throw just needs to be added to the final build. The warehouse has also been fixed. Generators are the right size. Uh, light boxes have been pulled from the wall. All of those little things. Uh, doors have been adjusted to the proper rotation and uh, positions. Um, and that should about cover it. Um, see the light box will open doors and all the assets generator pieces like I mentioned there's a stamina bar um, there should be a flashlight somewhere in this level uh, yep right there <laughs> um, so yeah all the prototype levels have been prepped for the most part apart from one stamina bar and the bottle throw level needing to be added on to there um, I just showed everything with the cage trap um, that should about cover it for my gear tasks um, and everything that I did for the uh, final sprint of our project so that or, uh, excuse me, old habits, uh, shattered sanity. I hope that, uh, you enjoyed my video and thank you for watching.